Hello, my furniture friends. Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott. I am about to get started on a massive makeover for this vintage chest of drawers or dresser that I thrifted a few weeks ago. This thing is severely outdated, but I think it's still got a ton of potential to be a beautiful contemporary piece of furniture again with a little bit of simplification. I'm not 100% sure where I'm going with this makeover just yet, but we're gonna work through it together. This piece is probably from the 60s or maybe the 70s. It's a super heavy quality built piece of Bassett furniture made with a mix of solid wood and oak veneers. But don't get too excited because all of these ornate details and trim on the doors and drawers are actually just molded plastic. That means that stripping and restaining them isn't an option. And for me, makes this a perfect candidate for a new painted finish. It's in really decent condition though, with the exception of a few nicks. All of the drawers are dovetailed and really nice and clean inside. It's just a little too busy for most people's current design preferences. Just like any other project, my first course of action is going to be to remove the hardware and anything else that I can and give this thing a good clean. I do know that I want to find some sort of sleeker looking hardware instead of reusing this overly chunky, clunky stuff. So I'm going to see what I can find on Amazon that might work. I think these drop poles for the drawers and then I'll just grab some plain gold handles for the bottom drawers. Remind me when I get to the end and I'm trying to get the doors to sit properly again, that the bottom hinge on either side needs a little cardboard shim made from a old Scotch guard box. Vintage furniture is always full of quirks. <laughs> from Sears. Love it. of the wooden drawer tracks look like they're in good condition. That one needs to be tightened a bit. But it all looks good in there. It's nice and clean. All right, I wanna try and get just this part out of here, hopefully without creating too much damage to the veneer that's underneath it. I could remove these extra panels from the middles of the drawers as well because they're a little busier than I'd like. 
but this is all one piece of molded plastic. There's not separate panels that I can pop off like on the doors. I'd have to cut it. How would I cut it? I could use my Dremel. Could I use my Dremel? Do I want to try and use my Dremel and risk making a mess of these? Because once I mess them up, I can't go back. This Dremel Multimax has a bunch of different attachments for cutting, scraping, or even sanding. So I'm just gonna pop a flush cut blade on it and see if I can follow the edge of the trim that I wanna keep and not completely destroy the rest of the drawer front. rough, but I can clean that up with sanding. Perfect. Okay, now that I've made an even bigger mess, I'm gonna put all these tools away and wash this thing. After giving each surface a good clean with some simple green degreaser to remove any old furniture polish residue or dirt, I mixed up some two-part epoxy style wood filler to close up the old hardware holes and make any other necessary repairs because it's going to dry rock hard for me pretty quickly. Now that this filler is dry enough, I'm going to sand it all flush and scuff sand everything else with some 120 grit sandpaper on my detail sander. And any spots that I can't get at with this, I'm going to have to do the old fashioned way by hand. To help me get around all the curvy trim bits, I'm gonna use a foam sanding pad, which gets into all of these details without grinding anything flat. Especially since this is plastic, I wanna give my primer and my paint as much micro texture to grab onto as I can. I think I've got all the sanding done, so I'm gonna pick up any extra dust with a damp microfiber rag so it doesn't get stuck in my primer. And then I think I'm just gonna use a little bit of paintable latex caulking to fill in the little gap that's left around the inside of the drawer trim so it looks seamless and like it was supposed to be this way all along.
think this is gonna be easier for me to paint if I lay it down. It's a little tall to reach and see what I'm doing, even if I take it off these dollies. So I'm gonna do that, lay it on its back on the wheels, lay out my drop cloth, and then I can get some primer on this thing. I'm using my favorite shellac base primer here because it's gonna cover all the bases for me. It's going to bond to the plastic surfaces and the original finish really well and seal up any bare wood on the drawer fronts and any porous wood filler spots. So the paint will sit nice and evenly across all those different textures and not absorb into any of them. Usually I use the version of this that comes in the quart or gallon size can and roll it on because this stuff is pricey and it is way more economical to do it that way. But I wanted to use up this spray can that I've had, so I'm gonna start with this. Apparently I blocked out how little coverage you get out of one of those spray cans. <laughs> so here I am with my roller anyways, oh well. It is a ridiculously miserable fall day, but I'm going to continue on with this. I need to sand the primer smooth and then I think I can get some paint on this thing. I grabbed a fresh foam pad so that I can smooth down any roughness that's dried in the primer without removing too much of it. And then I'll just wipe everything off again with my damp microfiber rag so the paint can stick to the surface and not to the layer of dust that's over everything. I have had this jar of Fusion Mineral Paint in one of their newer colors called Wellington for over a year now, I think. So it's high time that I finally use it on something. It's a really nice dark gray green shade and I'm gonna spray it on with my pneumatic sprayer because honestly, this is the method of painting that I'm most comfortable with. Fusion is actually made specifically to be brushed or rolled though. So if spraying isn't an option for you, this is a fantastic furniture paint choice. And straining your paint before you start spraying saves so many headaches with unexpected clogs. And I usually add about two tablespoons of water to about 10 ounces of paint when I'm using Fusion, not really to thin it out, but sort of to give it an extra few seconds before it dries on the surface so it lays a little flatter. This gun recommends an air pressure of 35 to 40 PSI. So once I double check that over on the air compressor, I can test out the flow and spray pattern on some cardboard and then point things at this furniture. The goal when you're spraying is never to get full coverage in just one coat. That's always gonna be putting way too much paint on the surface and end up leaving you with drips and sags. You can get pretty close to full coverage, but it definitely takes a lot of practice to be able to gauge and tell just how much paint you can lay down before that starts to happen. You're typically gonna get the best results with multiple lighter layers. I've let the first coat dry for about three hours. So now I'm gonna spray on the second to fill in all the lighter spots that need more coverage. But first I'm gonna give the whole thing a really light rub down with some 400 grit sandpaper, just to knock off any little bumps or bits that are on the finish. I also need to flip the doors over and get two coats onto the front of them.
Fusion has really great coverage with most of their colors, and I find I can usually get two or three coats on a larger project like this out of just one small pint of paint, and I usually always have a little left over at the end. Paint is nice and dry and looking great, but I think I want to add a top coat to it. Fusion does have a built-in acrylic resin top coat that makes it really durable, waterproof, and it's even UV resistant, but it's a matte sheen, and I want this to be more of a satin finish, so putting an extra layer over this with some tinted water-based polyurethane is going to get me there. I'm just going to use whatever little bit of paint is left in my gun. Putting poly onto darker colors like this can be tricky though because it can look streaky or cloudy. So tinting it like this really helps avoid that. You just want to be sure that you give it a really thorough mix so that it's totally incorporated before you apply it or else you might end up with patches of different sheen in your final finish. I completely washed out my spray gun so once I get it reloaded I'll just readjust all the knobs again and then spray on two coats of this with probably two hours in between. Polyurethane is dry, so I'm going to peel these old felt protectors off the bottom. Probably should have done this at the beginning, but that's okay. And there's a few dust bunnies down here that I missed too. My new hardware just showed up, so I'm going to find the center of the drawer and then measure out where I need to drill new holes for these and get the rest of things pulled back together. and we are not going to scratch any paint. Yeah. 
Okay, let's take a look back at how this thing started off when I thrifted it. I think this new simplified version is really pretty and is gonna be a great storage piece in a bedroom, a nursery, or even an office. It's completely refreshed now and ready to head off to a new home. I hope you had as much fun as I did working through the process on this one. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, but you love seeing the possibilities of what tired old furniture can be with a little bit of TLC, please make sure that you do that before you go. And I will catch you all next time.